Okay, McLaren series. Right, this is a um, a way of expressing functions in a different form because sometimes the way they are is just not going to work. So, for example, if you were asked to integrate e to the x squared dx, my expectation is that you would struggle. It's a horrific thing to integrate as it stands. But if instead I asked you to integrate 1 plus x squared plus x to the power of 4 over 2 dx, you'd have no problem. It's nice and easy thing to integrate. And if it just so happened that this series, and maybe a few more terms, was the same as e to the x squared, then obviously the answers would be the same. And it does just so happen that this series, with more terms, infinitely sums to this. So you can get as close to this one as you like with a series that looks like this. And the question is, how do I turn e to the x squared into a series which is actually the same as e to the x squared? And the answer is that we use McLaren's um, series, which is this extremely exciting formula here. Um, so f of x is the function we're trying to work with. So in this case, f of x is going to be e to the x squared. f of 0 is just that function evaluated at the point 0. x is x. f dash of 0 means you have to differentiate it and evaluate it. Second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, etc. And the only other fancy thing is what we call a factorial. So this 2 with the splat after it is... 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. And 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. There's a button on your calculator that does it for you. It's usually at the top left-hand corner of your calculator, but it's called factorial. And it just means multiply all numbers up to that point. So <clears throat> now that I've given you the uh, all the basic bits and pieces, let's have a go at actually trying to work out what the McLaren series is for e to the x squared. So my function I'm working with is e to the x squared, and I need to evaluate that at the point 0. So f of 0, 0 squared is 0, e to the power of 0 is 1. And I'm going to need the derivative of it. So if I differentiate e to the x squared, it's a chain rule. So the derivative of e to the x is still e to the x, times the derivative of the inside bit, which in this case is 2x. And now I want to evaluate that at 0, because each of these points it's got to be evaluated at 0, so I evaluate this at 0, well, <coughs> 2 times 0 is 0, and the rest is irrelevant, the answer is going to be 0. Second derivative, okay, now we've got ourselves a product rule, so it's the derivative of the first one times the second one, plus the first one times the derivative of the second one. <coughs> and that's probably easier to simplify that a little bit, so we've got 2e to the x squared plus 4x squared e to the x squared and probably even simpler, um, simplified a bit more, pull e to the x squared out the front so we're left with 2 plus 4x squared in the bracket. The simpler you can make it here the easier it is to differentiate the next time. And so the second derivative of 0, if I stick 0 into this equation that bit 0, so the bracket's just 2 e to the power of 0 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2. Third derivative, okay, so I'm going to differentiate this thing here, which again is a product rule, so the derivative of the first bit times the second bit plus the first bit times the derivative of the second bit. Okay, and then if I pull out um, e to the x squared again at the front, and what am I left with? I've got 8x from there, and 4x from there is 12x, and then I've got 2x times 4x squared is 8x cubed. And my f triple dash of that is 0. If I put 0 into this, 0, 0, all goes to 0. And I'll do one more derivative. So the fourth derivative Again, it's a product rule based on this, so it's the derivative of the first one times the second one plus the first one times the derivative of the second one. Yep, and again I can pull out the e to the x squared out the front of this thing, and what am I left with? Just a 12 from that one. And then I've got 24x squared and another 24x squared is 48x squared, and then I've got this one here will be 16x to the power of 
four. So my fourth derivative evaluated at the point zero, <coughs> that goes to zero, that goes to zero, I'm just left with 12 times one is 12. So I've got four derivatives. You can keep on going as many steps as you like. The next one will be zero again. In this case, it's only every second one that actually has a value. But now I can stick it all back into my expression here. So f of x equals f of zero, which was one, plus <coughs> x times f of zero, which was zero, plus x squared over two factorial, so it's just x squared over two, times the second derivative value, which was two, plus x cubed over three factorial, which is six, times the third derivative of zero, which was zero, plus x to the power of four over four factorial, which is 24, times the fourth derivative value, which was 12, plus dot, 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 dot. So that's one, plus those two cancel out, x squared, plus that one's a zero, 12 over 24 is the same as a half, x4 over 2, plus as many other points as you want. And that is what we had up at the start. So instead of dealing with e to the power of x squared, we can deal with this expression. And just to convince you that it's actually right, um, let's try evaluating them. We'll just pick a value. We'll say um, let x equal 0 0.5. Then e to the x squared is 0 to the half squared is a quarter. And e to the power of a quarter, if we whip out the calculator, uh, e to the power of, oh, that's natural log, got that wrong, shift, e to the power of a quarter is 1.284. Yep, and if we evaluate this expression here with a half in it, I'm just going to find some room, I'll move over here, so we'll now evaluate the expression here, putting a half in, so 1 plus a half squared plus a half to the power of 4 over 2 is 1 plus a quarter plus 1 over 2 to the power of 4 is 16 over half is 32 and we'll do that on the calculator just to see what we come up with so 1 plus 1 quarter plus 1 over 32 equals oh, 1 and 9 32 so let's have that as a decimal 1.2 Two eight one. Okay, so the actual value is 1.284, and this uh, McLaren's approximation to it is 1.281, which, given that I only went to three terms, is not too bad. And if you want to have it more accurate than that, you need to go to more terms. So here we have a method of writing really inconvenient functions, such as e to the x squared, which is horrifically hard to do, integrate, as a series which we can make as accurate as we like and able to use instead. McLaren series.